Hey folks, David Fine from Keys Moths. Today's a great episode because it's simple. Uh, it's just going to be an, a releasing and unwrapping of my two um, tobacco hornworm, hornworm moths. It's Manduca Sexta. I had a phone call from my dad. He said that there are hornworm moths tearing up his angel's trumpet. So I was hoping, I was hoping that they would be rustic sphinx, Manduca rustica, but turns out they were six spot hawk moths, but we raised them and I just figured I would do a quick video on the release of these bugs. So uh, guys, uh, give me a like, thumbs up on the video, and don't forget to subscribe. We're gonna show you some big, cool sphinx moths. There they are. We're gonna release these guys here now. They just hatched out and emerged. So uh, let's get to it, shall we? All right, guys, so here's what we have. We have a uh, container here that has some moth pupae in it, and you can see them all in there. And sorry for the marconium, that's kind of sprayed everywhere. I gotta change out these uh, towelettes, but um, guys, we actually had a phone call from my dad, and he's got a big angel's trumpet plant in his yard, and it was starting to get decimated by green hornworms and so he called me and said Dave what do you think these are so he sent me some pictures and it turns out that they are what are called or what are known as tobacco hornworm moths or manduca sexta and these are well Dave they look like gray hawk moths uh, well there's a bunch of species that look very similar and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show you how to tell the difference between Manduca sexta and Manduca quinquamaculata and uh, Manduca rustica, which are all locals here. So, um, what, are you, what are you laughing at? My nerd words? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just don't. Hey, watch your lip. So, um, guys, these are some really big, cool moths, but these are definitely the most common of the Manduca species throughout the country. And, um, you know, I'm going to show them to you here. I'm going to actually pop this top open. They will pupate. Guys, if you ever raise sphinx moths, here is the, um, the pupil shell. And you can see that the manducas, anything in the manduca group, they bury themselves under the soil when they're going to make their pupa. So what the larva will do when they go pre-pupal, whoops, drop the pupa shell there. What the larva will do, it'll, it'll crawl down out of the tree and find some leaf litter, probably some loose soil, and it'll pupate underneath the soil. But the cool thing about this pupa is it's got like this alien head capsule. You see this big thing that sticks out off the front here? That's actually the proboscis chamber. So the big long proboscis of that are that sphinx moths are actually known for. That thing actually hangs out in this proboscis chamber and pretty much all of the Manduca species, the pupa all have this big impressive proboscis chamber. So this is just the shell guys. There's nothing inside of this. Uh, one of these guys popped out of this chrysalis here um, earlier today. So. Uh, guys, cool thing, if you ever want to raise sphinx moths and have them emerge properly, uh, one of the really cool things to do, like when you're raising the caterpillars and you see the caterpillar crawl down off the plant and start roaming around the bottom of the cage, and maybe even starting to nestle itself up underneath some leaf litter on the bottom or in the bottom of your paper towels, it's probably pre-pupil. It's probably done eating at that point, and what you'll do you can take them out at that point and put them in a container like this. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a paper towel ramp all the way up to the top. Because what will happen is if they emerge and they don't have anything to climb up on, like the, the plastic on the side of this container might be too slippery 
for the moth and they'll try to try to crawl up it but they're there's nothing for them to grab onto because it's too slippery so they'll slide down and then if they don't have anything to climb up on then they their wings might get deformed because they need gravity needs to be able to pull their wings down so you you create the paper towel ramp they crawl up the ramp and then they'll sit there gravity pulls the wings down as they pump blood into the wings and now we've got two very healthy uh, moths that are ready to fly so what i'm going to do guys i'm going to pick up the first one we'll see how this goes he should be very very awake there he goes well he's not he's not too feisty okay so um i'm gonna see if i can get him to crawl right on this plant they'll definitely be for better photography come on 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 come on, come on. Attaboy. Okay. Now, you can see, even though this isn't the most well-camouflaged location, you can see, if you're not looking for this thing, how that brown modeled pattern, you'll just, you'll just miss it because, this, you know, you'll just be blind to this thing. Um, birds find them, I guess, but, you know, they, they have an incredible camouflage situation going on. And it is a beautiful moth, guys. So uh, you can see that Sphinx moths actually cover their abdomen and their hind wings when at rest. So it's tough to identify moths sometimes because of how they rest. So in order to properly identify this guy, what I'm going to do is I am going to tap on his abdomen here. And here's why. Because here's how you identify them. There should be six yellow spots. Ready? Let's count. One, two, three. Let's see, am I counting right? Oh, I adjusted her. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I only see five. How about that? Oh, no, there's a sixth one, but it's covered. All right. So, so there is a there is a sixth spot. There it is, way up there, high up on. There it is. Let's count from the top. One. <laughs> is he going to cooperate with me, or is he going to fly? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, the six spotted hawk moth, guys. This is Manduca sexta, and this is what is known as the tobacco hornworm. Guys, very, very common moth. They feed on a number of plants, including tomatoes. They'll tear up some tomatoes. They will tear up um, peppers. They'll tear up, tear up potatoes, anything in the nightshade family. And it's a very common moth and they destroy a lot of crops. Guys, this potentially is one of the biggest pests, garden pests in all of uh, the United States. It's one of the biggest garden pests because it eats so many things that, that produce fruit and crops. And so people are very, very upset when they get their tomatoes eaten. So, all right, guys, let's see if we can get this guy to actually fly. See if I can annoy him enough. There he goes. Is he gonna take off? There he goes. There's butterflies all over. There's a monarch, some statira. Yeah, there's a monarch, guys. Let's see if we can get a monarch in the video. Monarch migration's happening, guys. It is late October, and there's a monarch, and they start come showing up down here in South Florida right around this time. So I figured I would go ahead and show him off. That's a male. Let's see. Is he going to land? Well, we've got plenty of other butterflies as well. We've got a Gulf artillery floating around here. And that's the Gulf artillery right there. And we also have Statira sulfurs. They just love our fire bush and it's a great plant. But guys, this is a, a great tree to have as well. This is a sweet almond bush. This thing is about 15, 15 feet tall at least. It's a big tall bush and I keep trimming it back. and. Uh, Guys, just butterflies all over the place. It's late afternoon too, guys. So one of my Sphinx moths has flown off successfully. Now 
I'm going to go get the other one and do a little bit of uh, show and tell with him. This guy's a little bit of a smaller guy. Again, six spots on the on the abdomen there. He's so cute, isn't he? He's see he's sporting, uh He's spraying me with marconium. Marconium is sort of like a a form of afterbirth uh, that the digested uh, fluids that are pretty much waste that ha that accumulate inside the pupa or inside the abdomen while in the pupa phase. Um, it stores them up in the abdomen. The first thing they do when they emerge before they start flying is release all of that stuff. So yeah, I gotta go wash my hands. No Corona there. Um, but, so let's see. Just a cool moth. All right, so let's see if I can get him. All right, come on, guy. There he goes. He's flying. He's flying. Oop. There he goes. Where's he going to go? There he is. All right. So now, this is where he chose to land all on his own. So you can see just how camouflaged this guy is. And this is where they would naturally choose to fly. You know, he flew away on his own. And this is where he decided that he would land. So you can see how the camouflage is just super, super good and if you were not if you did not know this moth was there you just would not see it so uh kudos to you buddy hope you do well go find yourself a, a mate all right guys hope you like that video nice and short and sweet uh we love our moths and you know we raise them in captivity and we will document their life cycles but we try to release as many as we can um hey we showed you some big cool moths uh guys if you like the video give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and um, click the bell for notifications so we'll get you new videos every time we post anything new uh, about the butterflies and moths of South Florida. We've also got a website. It's uh, keysmoths.com and we've got literally 700 species of butterflies and moths from the Florida Keys documented there for you and all kinds of information there. Some great photography. So uh, guys, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.